We've established that lifters are the best solution for clean, safe, and reliable energy. But did you know that if implemented, that we could provide massive economic benefits to every American at every income level? I'm Sean Kenny, and this is Rock Logic. Welcome to Rock Logic. I am your host, Sean Kenny. Now, for those of you who have been uh, tuning in uh, to this show, know I like to talk a lot about molten salt reactors, specifically the lifter or liquid fluoride thorium reactor. I talk about the advantages uh, they have over not just conventional nuclear, but every other facet of energy production. And while I'm sure many agree that this technology is great and needs to be implemented as soon as possible, a question always arouses how much is it gonna cost? It's a fair question seeing as I continually advocate to see this technology be implemented as the primary energy source for our nation and the rest of the world. Now, before going into this, it's important to note that I call this episode the economics of lifter, not the economics of the molten salt reactor. For those of you asking why, the answer is simple. Lifter is a specific type of molten salt reactor. All lifters are molten salt reactors, but not all molten salt reactors are lifters. Uh, there's an extremely important distinguish between them, as well as many other uh, molten salt reactor designs to be considered. There's the molten chloride fast reactor, which has the potential to recycle uh, nuclear, uh, uh, spent nuclear fuel from existing light water reactor uh, waste stockpiles, as well, uh, as well as other forms of nuclear waste. There's the integral molten salt reactor, which is a simpler design that uses uranium instead of thorium. And of course, there's the Thorcon design, which uses a combination of both thorium and uranium in a single fluid burner design. I plan on covering this in more detail in a future episode, as it will be the first uh, thorium reactor to go to market. Now, while all of these designs have their own uh, distinct advantages and disadvantages over each other, I discuss the lifter in this episode because of one very clear distinction. Uh, it's a breeder reactor in every sense of the word. Uh, it produces more fissile material than it actually consumes, and it produces many fission products with benefits for both the healthcare and the space exploration industries. And while other nuclear reactors can use thorium for fuel, the lifter is unique in its ability, uh, ability to maximize uh, the efficiency of the thorium fuel cycle. So instead of an energy source that'll last you for say hundreds of years, we've got a source that'll last us for millions of years. Is this design more expensive than previous ones I've discussed? Potentially, yes. However, while the other designs can produce electricity, the lifter can produce other forms of revenue to make up for the difference in upfront cost. So how much are we talking about here? Uh, in this scenario, I'm gonna go into the unique business case of building one of these reactors uh, in the United States. Why? One, because I live here. Two, because we're a Western nation uh, with a developed economy as opposed to a developing one with different needs. And three, unlike developing nations where you need to provide cheap electricity to achieve a standard of living, uh, countries like the United States are more concerned with maintaining and improving that standard of living while also decarbonizing our infrastructure. Uh, we can afford to pay a little bit more for electricity if it means uh, uh, achieving a cleaner environment. That being said, uh, power from lifter is still cheaper than coal and other sources of energy production. Now, to get into cost, there are two metrics to consider. There's capital cost, which is the upfront cost associated with building a reactor, and operating costs, which covers uh, the maintenance and overall expenses of operation. Based on a number of studies carried out by both public and private entities, uh, the best guess for the lifter is about $2,000 per kilowatt capital cost and an operating cost of three cents per kilowatt hour. Now, that's a little more expensive expensive uh, than less compact designs uh, like what Thorcon is projecting in Indonesia, uh, but it's still pretty good. It's still builder, uh, cheaper than building new coal plants in the United States, and it's a fraction of the cost of what a conventional nuclear power plant costs. Uh, the operating costs uh, would make it less than half the cost of every other form of energy production in this country. And let's not forget the environmental benefits of less waste produced and uh, no emissions at all. Uh, now, operating at a higher temperature and lower pressures means that uh, less materials need to be used during the construction process. And because lifters are more compact, they can actually be produced on an assembly line in a factory in addition to the supporting components. That makes construction costs as well as deadlines far more predictable and reliable, and as we get better at making these reactors, it will get cheaper to manufacture over time. 
Now, I plan on, <laughs> plan on spending a lot of money, uh, so I expect to get the most bang for my buck. I don't want to just make a power plant to sell electricity. I want to make a co-generation facility that can make multiple products, so I get multiple income streams uh, to make the most amount uh, of money possible. In this country, coal power plants have been on the decline. This is, of course, due to the pollution concerns, environmental regulations because of the previous administration, uh, and the fracking boom, which has led to the decline of the price of uh, operating natural gas power plants uh, in this country. So as a result of all these factors, we are decommissioning coal plants across the country. These plants are usually located near major city, a major rail line for shipping fuel and other supplies, and a nearby body of water for plant cooling. This makes them perfectly suited to be repurposed as lifter plants that make clean electricity from thorium and liquid fuels from coal. Now let's say you want to make a thousand megawatt power plant and the additional uh, infrastructure to make liquid fuels and other products. Flybe Energy, a company which plans on making a lifter for commercial use, has designed a 250 megawatt utility class lifter with an estimated price at $2,000 per kilowatt. That would be about half a billion dollars for a 250 megawatt reactor, including all the necessary equipment for fuel processing and power conversion. Multiplied times four, that's about $2 billion for a thousand megawatt power plant. We also want to add in the cost uh, for the coal to liquid conversions. Now, there are several studies I can pull from, but a, CT, uh, a CTL plant that can produce 50,000 barrels of gasoline and diesel per day is roughly between five and $6 billion. So best guess, we're looking at about $8 billion for this facility. Now, that may sound like a lot of money, but to put it into perspective, this station will produce multiple revenue streams. Our operating costs are gonna be about $3, uh, sorry, three cents per kilowatt hour, but to factor in profit, I'm gonna charge six cents. So, Based on that, at six cents per kilowatt hour, you get about $525,600,000 uh, in electricity sales, minus those operating expenses, you get about $262,800,000 in profit. Uh, for fuel, we can produce 50,000 barrels a day, uh, per day of gasoline. Each barrel can hold about 42 gallons of uh, fuel, and the cost to produce is believed to about 80% cheaper than that of petroleum-based fuels, seeing as the waste heat needed to make it is free. Uh, as of the recording of this episode, the average price for gasoline in the United States is about $2.20 per gallon. So assuming those estimates are correct, that's 44 cents per gallon to make it, uh, we can sell our gasoline for about $1.10 and still receive a 60% profit margin with the added benefit of also being uh, more energy dense and cleaner due to additional processing. Taking those numbers, uh, we make about $843,150,000 a year in fuel sales. Minus the production costs, you get about $505,890,000 a year in profit. So taking those huge numbers and adding them together, we get about $1,368,750,000 in revenue and about $768,690,000 in profit. Pretty damn good, but we're not done yet. As mentioned before, the lifter can make various fission products as well as medical isotopes that can be siphoned off and sold to various markets. To produce one gigawatt of electricity for a year, you need roughly a thousand kilograms of thorium. Combined with a relatively small amount of uranium-233, you produce the following products. About 150 kilograms of xenon at about $180,000 about 125 kilograms of neodymium at 150,000. That's actually uh, not a lot, but that's about what it would cost to buy about 1,000 kilograms of thorium. So you basically phase out your fuel costs right there, which is pretty nice. About 15 kilograms of plutonium-238 for radioisotope power. Um, best guess is gonna be about $150 million, which NASA would be glad to pay. They are desperate for this stuff. They are using it in their deep space probes. So pretty solid market right there. And about 20 kilograms of medical molybdenum-99 and medical uh, stable technetium, which are used for diagnostic procedures. You will also produce an additional five kilograms of thorium-229, which decays into bismuth-213, which can be used for uh, various treatment therapies and alpha, uh, targeted alpha therapy to help cure various dispersed cancers. I don't have the exact number here per se because we don't really know what the true cost of bismuth-213 will be uh, because it's such a rare material, but uh, combine that with Molly 99, I'm guessing at about on the low end, about $170 million. 
Again, these are just cost estimates, but if I hit the mark accurately, I just made another $320 million in the production of these uh, products. So taking that, we make $320 million off of selling medical isotopes. I make another $768 million uh, selling both uh, electricity and liquid fuels. So on average, I'm gonna get about a billion dollars per year in profit. So I'll make back my CapEx estimates in the next eight years. For fun, can we do more? Yes, we can. Now, here's where you start profiting from cleaning up the planet. The EPA estimates that the United States alone produces over 140 million tons of coal ash waste per year from the burning of coal. There really is no way to dispose of that ash, so it just sits in a big mound behind the power plant. One could make the business case for disposing of it cleanly and generating a profit by selling various oxide metals and rare earths inside of it. For starters, there's more than enough thorium and uranium oxide to power the plant, so we just use those from the coal ash and power everything. Uh, no new mining would be required in this instance, which is pretty cool. Next, we have aluminum. Uh, aluminum. The United States does not possess any domestic reserves of bauxite ore, which is used to make aluminum. We either import it from China or we recycle scrap materials. Uh, of, uh, of the 140 million tons of coal ash waste we produce as a country, 14.8% of it is aluminum oxide metals. So roughly about 20 million tons of this stuff is just sitting there with no viable way to extract it. The solution uses uh, the excess waste energy from fission to extract the materials uh, and sell it. The current price of aluminum today is about $1,780 per ton. So multiply that by 20 million tons, you're looking at about $35.6 billion a year in extracting aluminum materials. Now that's just for the whole country in terms of economic output. To be clear, if you add 20 million tons of this stuff into the global economy, the price of aluminum is gonna drop precipitously. And I can go on all day about the benefits of bringing global costs of aluminum down, uh, both the environmental and the economic ramifications. Uh, in addition to aluminum, we can also extract various rare earth materials and sell them to aid this country in the establishment of a domestic supply chain uh, for electronics manufacturing. So there you have it. As with anything uh, at this scale, there usually is a large upfront cost, but with Lifter, you can recoup your costs over a very short period of time by selling multiple products. At least that's the business case for building a big power plant in this country. However, as we develop these 250 megawatt reactors, we can sell them individually to smaller cities and towns. The business case is still there, just to a lesser degree. Uh, the most appealing factor is that you have a lot more flexibility than you would with more conventional means of power production. Uh, and while we make a lot of money producing energy in this way, we're gonna end up doing a lot of good in the process. Curing cancer, cleaning up landfills, and ending our dependence on foreign oil, uh, oil, as well as, most importantly, lowering the cost of energy so that the average Americans can have an even greater standard of living. As we develop this technology domestically, we can even scale the application abroad, but that will be a topic for another episode. Right now, I'm your host, Sean Kenny, and this is RockLogic. Hey, thank you so much for uh, watching today's episode. Uh, we're a new podcast, so we really appreciate if you like this video and subscribe to it. My producer, Jessica, says that I'll get a cookie uh, for every new subscriber we get. Maybe if I'm good enough, she'll let me outside. Is that good? Yeah, all right. Mmm. That's good. That's a good cookie.